And here we have a close-up of the vibration generator. Again, these are fairly standard type units. You can see by looking inside it, it vibrates up and down like this. And you attach your um, string to the top there. As you can see, there's a, there's a hole that goes all the way through that you can thread a string through, which is my preferred way of doing it. You can close that hole by tightening that up if you wish. Um, you don't have to. You can just tie string to it if you want, but that runs the risk of this bending from side to side. Um, there's a screw that goes in the top as well if you want to attach something to it. Ah, oh, there's the screw attached magnetically there. That, that would, you could use that to tighten, to tighten up something on the top. The socket's on there. You can see it says 3 ohms, 1 amp max. There's no positive and negative. It doesn't matter which way you connect wires. This 3 ohms is the impedance of this device, and it needs to be matched to the output impedance of the signal generator, which uh, we talked about earlier. Now, the output impedance of these uh, orange Unilab signal generators is about 1 ohms on the low setting, and this is 3 ohms input. So 1 and 3 match reasonably well. The other, if you were to use the high output of the signal generator, it would be 100 ohms, and that doesn't match 3 very well. And so what you would find is that this didn't vibrate very much, essentially. So it's better to match them. So you need the low output there, and, um, and that's it. So there's the signal generator. If you put more than 1 amp through, as you can see, then you run the risk of damaging this device. So please try not to do that.